Hey guys. Hey, I'm working on this super cute project. So I thought I would bring you guys along. You know how it goes. Um, and show you guys what we're doing. So I scored this. This is like legit. This is the inside of an old ice cream maker. Um, there must have been a lot of ice cream making in the last few summers because I'm seeing a lot of ice cream makers in the thrift store. Um, and a lot of them are not in good shape. But I love the metal um, that goes in the middle of them because they're just a perfect shape for me to make a faux croc. I love crocs, you guys. I might have a problem. And so we're gonna take this and we're gonna make it look like an antique croc. This metal um, ice cream maker cylinder, that's what we're gonna call it. Um, I've already taken the, taken the liberty of priming this. I used a foam roller and I rolled the primer on the surface of this. The reason why I use the foam roller is because I'm gonna make it into a full crock and I wanna have a really nice um, smooth surface. I think that's the, like, the best way to be able to accomplish that. And so this is already primed and ready to go. Um, I use Wise Owl Stain Blocking Primer in white and I'm also gonna be using Wise Owl's One R Enamel in Cashmere. It's this really um, pretty bone white with just a tint of green. Um, I think it's gonna be really pretty for this. So it's not a bright white, which if this is gonna be an antique crock, it wouldn't be bright white, right? And I'm also gonna be using um, Wise Owl's Micro Edge Brush, which is legit my favorite brush to use with the One R Enamel. In order to, treat, uh, to achieve the ceramic-like finish that I'm wanting, that's why I'm using the one hour enamel because it's self-leveling you get a nice smooth surface i think my son robbed me of my flathead screwdriver so we, let's see if we can get this open with a phillips screwdriver you guys he's fixing his brakes on his car so i'm going to take a moment i've already shaken this pretty good but i really really want to make sure um that it's stirred really well the enamel paint is a really specialized paint, you guys. Unlike the chalk style paint, um, it's a really smooth paint. We actually use this on our kitchen cabinets um, and it looks like a factory finish because it self levels so beautifully. And it really is a ceramic like finish, which makes it perfect for this particular project. So um, we are used to the chalk style paints, which are really thick. This paint is really thin, and so it takes some getting used to, I think, when we use it. So I'm gonna pour this into a bowl. You guys never wanna paint directly out of your cans. Um, when you dip your brush in there, you introduce bacteria into your paint, and then when you close it and put it away, that bacteria grows, and you can actually ruin your paint that way. So in order for me to get a clean pour, you guys, I'm gonna use tape to kind of make a bit of a funnel on my can. And so I'm basically gonna tape down an arrow so that when the paint pours, um, it doesn't spread out all along the rim like it did the last time, look, when I poured. And so you wanna make sure that the place where yours meets is above the rim of the can. Otherwise, it'll still go into the rim and it kind of defeats the whole purpose or the, the whole process. And so um, I've just created that little triangle right there so that when I pour, um, it pours exactly where I want it to pour. And then when I'm done using this, I'm not gonna do it yet. I can just pull this tape off and I won't have a big old mess on my can. So, um, but I don't know how much paint I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna leave that open for now. So I'm gonna take my paint and I'm actually gonna paint from the bottom to the top. And that way anything that drips down, um, I, can, I can get it. And so this paint is a lot thinner than the paint that we're used to working with, you guys. Um, and so you really, really, really want to watch out for any drips that may occur because this paint is made to move. It's self-leveling. That's what it does. And this is a paint that you just want to get on the surface. You don't want to overwork it um, because you can actually overwork it and then you cause a problem with brush, with brush strokes yourself. Um, by not trusting the product or the process. And so just keep an eye because this paint does move. Um, and so you just keep an eye on it to make sure that you aren't getting any drips anywhere. And now under that lip right there, I can see paint moving. So I'm gonna go and just remove the excess paint um, from the lip of the can. Again, I'm touching it as, as little as possible, you guys. 
um, because I don't want to leave brush marks. I really do want it to look like it's ceramic, which you can accomplish with this paint. Um, although some of the old Crocs did have drips on them. I do remember seeing that. I actually collect Crocs and I love them, but um, they're hard. It's not easy to find them, right? And I use them in my shop um, and in my house to store different things because I'm a very visual person um, and I have to see things. And so storing them in pieces like this, I can see what's in it and it just works for me. And if I can make them pretty, then that's just an extra bonus, right? So I've gotten my first layer of paint. I'm going in and painting about um, two or three inches into the inside of the piece. And that's just so even if I uh, put florals or something in here to stage it or to make it beautiful, you'll be able to see the inside lip, right? So I am just going in and painting a coat so that it's not glaringly like not consistent. I'm getting a little bit of drip over here, but I'm actually going to leave that. I think that's going to make it look more authentic. So I'm going to stop and leave everything alone before I mess it up. Um, we'll come back after this is dry, you guys, and we'll put a second coat on um, and then we'll finish up. Now that our first coat of paint has dried, we're going to go ahead and apply a second coat. Now, when we apply the second coat, you guys, it's going to be a little different than the first. You're going to need to use a little bit more paint and be more patient when you're spreading your paint out. I think everyone is so used to working with the chalk style paint um, that they're just not used to this paint. And it is super thin, but that is what makes it self-leveling. And so ultimately that's what we love about it. I'm being very cautious not to overwork it. And I'm being really mindful of how much paint um, I'm pushing under the lid because that's where um, my drips are coming from, is from the paint that's pushing, pushing under that lip on the top of the can. And so we don't want that. So I'm just going back, double checking, making sure. Okay, and that's it. So we're gonna let this layer dry um, and then we'll get to the fun part of putting on the transfers to make it look like an old croc. Okay, so um, now that our paint is, it's primarily dry. I have an area over here that's not drying, but we're gonna move forward, you guys. You guys can see this beautiful ceramic-like finish that we were able to create um, with the enamel paint. And so next is the fun part, the magic part. I'm going to use the decor transfer from Iron Orchid Design called Classic Pots, you guys. This transfer is so fun and you can use it for so many projects because basically you have an entire roll of mini transfers. And so I'm looking for something larger because this bucket is kind of larger. Like I love this one, but I think it's too small. Um, and this one, I believe, is the one we're going to go with because it's a larger scale transfer and I think it'll look appropriate for the size of the can that we're using. So all I'm going to do is just cut this transfer away from this one. I'm not going to cut all the way across. I'm just going to like literally cut it out um, because I really want to disturb this as, as less as possible. I am just cutting out my topography. And you guys know what? I think I'm going to put a flower on here. I just decided, like, right now. I think she needs something pretty. And so I have a little scrap over here left over um, from one of my other transfers. So we're going to do a little bit of layering. I just decided right now. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to put the flower on first. Usually when I'm laying my florals with my topography, I'll put the floral on first, and then I'll layer the topography over the top. But first I have to cut off my tape. So I just use plain old, you know, gift wrapping tape um, to tape that down to protect it. And so I'm going to cut that off so I can use this transfer. And so I think I'm going to position this like 
right here. The one hour enamel really creates a super smooth surface and the transfers really love super smooth surfaces. So this transfer is gonna heal, it's gonna adhere fairly quickly. The secret to successful transfers is um, you'll have more success on a sealed surface because they really do like smoother surfaces and make sure that your surface is completely dry. So if you're painting a piece of wood furniture, you can touch the surface of your furniture. If it's still cool, that means that there's probably moisture that's trapped underneath and in the wood. Um, and so you'll wanna wait before you adhere your transfer and wait until that dries out completely. Because any moisture that gets trapped underneath there is going to affect your transfer's adhesion. So this is a stick that comes with all of your transfers and I'm literally just rubbing this off of um, the paper. And you can always lift it to see if it's come off. And if there's a piece that's not coming off, then you just lay it back down um, and you can continue rubbing. I and Orchid Design transfers come with these lines. So these lines will not come off with a transfer. They're just guides to help you when you're lining up your transfers on your pieces. And when I get to my last piece, I'll always keep my hand on this one because sometimes you can get to the last little bit and it's not laying down. And if you lift too soon, then it just makes it harder to reposition it perfectly to be able to regain that portion. So you see the very tips of this weren't laying down. And because I held on to it, I can lay it down really easily and be able to recapture those. It will be really hard to line them back up later perfectly. And voila. And so once I have it on there, don't pay attention to that imperfect little part right there. Once I have this on here, um, I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to go over um, my transfer. And this is just ensuring that there's really good contact between the transfer and the surface so that I don't have any issues with it lifting later. Look, I meant to put this way over here where it was perfect and I still ended up putting it right there by my little, my little mess up right there, but it's okay. So I have that all on there and now I'm gonna take my topography and I'm gonna layer it over the top of this. This is gonna be so pretty. And I think I want it to be like, here. I'm going to have to use another transfer to balance this design out. I'll probably put something small right there. We'll see. Maybe, maybe not. Now, when you're using the topography, um, you know, you have little bitty pieces of transfer. So you have to be a little deliberate and make sure that you go over like each letter. These work beautifully on glass and on mirror um, because it, they just, they love it. So any letters that I skipped, I'm gonna see when I try to lift up my piece or any portion of the letter that isn't adhering, I can see right away um, when I lift up my transfer. And if you're really concerned about layering your transfers, um, one of the things that you can do is you could do a layer of sealer over um, your first layer of transfers and then let that sealer dry and then go in with your second transfer. But generally, I don't have any issues um, laying my transfers. How beautiful is that, you guys? That is so cute. So now I can take this, um, and I can put some florals in this and I can set it and no one will ever know that it's a tan out of an old ice cream maker. Um, I'm gonna use some rock hard top coat. It's a marine grade sealer to coat this because I'll be taking this to a local shop to sell. And I wanna make sure that whoever gets this, um, if they do use water in this, that they're not gonna have any issues. So I'm going to seal this. I'm using um, Wise Owl's um, Micro Edge brush. This is the 1.5. We do have the two inch ones coming, you guys. I'm super excited about those. So I'm going to take this and just seal this. 
And what this will do is it'll protect the transfer. Now for the one hour enamel paint, you don't have to seal it. It actually um, has um, the top, the, it has its own top coat. So you don't have to worry about sealing it. But because I'm sealing the transfer, I'm gonna go ahead and seal the whole piece. So that way the surface looks consistent. And I have some drips on here, you guys, but I'm not gonna worry about it because I collect Crocs and a lot of them have drips on them from when they were glazed. That's my fill line right there. And this was just something that was at the thrift store and I'm convinced if I hadn't bought it, the thrift store would have ultimately thrown it away because it really didn't serve any function anymore. But if you have, um, when you go shopping, the challenge is to not look at what the item is and to not look at um, the surface of it, but to really look at its form. Um, and you'll find that you can reuse a lot of the things that you find at the thrift store. And so that is it for this project, you guys. I'll take some pictures and we'll post them up of her all finished. Um, I think it came out super cute, other than the drips, which I'm gonna try to come to terms with, right? Um, thank you guys so much for joining me for another project. Again, my name is Royce Hunt Bell owner of Recycled Treasures. If you guys have questions about any of the products that we use for this video, you can find them at www.recycled.com. If you guys have any questions about this project, you can put your questions in the comments and I'll come through and try to answer them as best I can. Um, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure and subscribe to our channel. We'll be uploading new tutorials every week maybe twice a week. Um, and if you hit the bell, you'll actually be alerted of when we upload a new video. Thank you guys so much. Um, you have a blessed day. Thanks.